Why do some speakers have more than 20 kilohertz tweeters? Lucas in Groningen, the Netherlands, is asking us, and he says, hey, Paul, let me start by saying that I love your videos. Ah, thank you. That's really kind. I've watched almost every single one of them. <laughs> wow, it's like a thousand, man. And I've learned a lot from them. So every day I find myself looking forward to a new one. Well, again, thank you. So my question is this. I recently bought a different amp which can output a frequency range of 10 hertz to 65 kilohertz. My speakers have a frequency response up to 20 kilohertz. And some people on the internet say most music tracks only contain information to about 17 kilohertz. But when looking for other speakers, I see examples that have a frequency response up to 35 kilohertz and more. Uh, and there are super tweeters that go up to 100 kilohertz. But if most music doesn't contain the information of those frequencies, isn't this overkill? Should I upgrade my speakers or stop worrying about missing out on those ultra high frequencies? What? Come on now, someone in, someone in high end audio is talking about overkill? <laughs> Elizabeth, I'm coming home. <laughs> I think overkill and high-end audio are synonymous. Um, all right, look, there's, there's, there are some good reasons for that. Our, our BHK amplifiers and preamplifiers, for example, it go well out to 65 kilohertz. And if we were to bring that back, dial it back to, say, 30 kilohertz, you would hear a difference. I, I know that to be true because I did the experiment. We started out uh, only going to about 35 kilohertz and it just, the top end was not open and airy as we had hoped and it was, it was noticeable. You don't want to notice it. You want it just to be music as if symbols are going on in, in the room as they do forever. And it just sounded restricted and when Bascom took that up to, I think he got it, 65, 70 kilohertz, it just opened up the top end in ways that are hard to describe. Why is that? Well, for one thing, high frequencies are not exactly the things that we're so concerned with. Sometimes the obvious isn't what we should be looking at, rather the impacts of of what's happening that causes those obvious points to be the way they are. Let me explain. Okay, that, was, that was a pretty circuitous sentence. Phase shift. When we have a tweeter or an amplifier that starts rolling off at frequencies just above where we can hear, the effects of that roll off extend down into the areas that we can hear. So let's imagine that, let's just take an, an, an example of 25 kilohertz. Now, we, we all agree, I'm 71 years old, I can't hear 25 kilohertz. I can, you know, I probably, I think the last time I had my hearing checked, I was rolling off at about 12K, 12, 13K, something like that. And uh, younger people can probably hear 17, 18, some of them 20. None of us can hear 25, maybe a dog can. But if something is rolling off at 25 kilohertz, if we look at it with, with proper sine waves and we can start measuring the phase response, the phase angles, we see that the filtering effects extend way down into the audible range. So let's say that we had, we're rolling it off at, say, 12 dB per octave, or we're rolling it off at 6 dB per octave, whatever we're rolling it off at, it, it, it follows a slope, and that slope is going to have phase shift associated with it, which means that the, 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 you know, if we have a perfect sine wave, it's going to be shifted in phase. And that's something the ear is very sensitive to. So by extending the frequency response well beyond the point of human hearing, we also extend the, the, the roll off and we, and, and we get out of the phase shift area. So without going crazy, the higher that you can have your tweeter or your electronics go, the less phase shift that you're going to have. So like on our new speakers here, this, this waveguide that you see 
is uh, the new speaker has a coaxial driver, a coaxial ribbon driver, where the mid-range is a ribbon and the tweeter is a ribbon and it stands proud of the mid-range. And you can see this is called a waveguide. So this waveguide and the tweeter behind it extend out to 40, 50 kilohertz on our new uh, FR30. And all of our speakers will probably use that from the lowest cost to the highest cost. They'll use that same tweeter and it goes out. Why? Because it has this extended, wonderful, airy highs because it doesn't have phase shift. And that's very important and that's why we hear that. So it's not the frequency response per se, it's the effects of rolling it off too soon that we hear. Hope that helps. Okay, talk to you later.